So Dan, when, when I think when most people think Appalachia, where we are, and when they think dulcimer, they think of the mountain dulcimer, which is really kind of a more traditional folk instrument from this region. And uh, you actually brought one just to show me what it is. Yeah, that's, uh, this is it. it, and they sound like this, let's see. I think I know that song. That yeah. song sounds familiar. <laughs> so, but now this is quite different from the hammer dulcimer, the instrument that you play. Yeah, t tonally they have something in common. They both have a, a really easy to find do, re, mi scale, mm -hmm. but they're not related in any other way. They're both called dulcimers, which is a word dulci and myrrh. It's it's sweet music, and many instruments in early America were called dulcimers, and that's the only thing they have in common. All right. Well, let's now that we've put that. To aside. rest. Yeah. Yes, put aside the uh, the Appalachian or the mountain dulcimer. And tell me more about the instrument that you play, the hammer dulcimer. The hammer dulcimer is, uh, um, many cultures claim it, uh, because it's a, bit, it's a primitive instrument in that it's something that you strike, so it's related to drums. And it has similar diatonic sort of tunings, but it's older than the piano. It's actually in the literature for the pianoforte. They talked about the one the gypsies were playing called the cymbalum. Yeah. And, uh, said they want something with that kind of dynamic range. And so that's where it came from. And, and I guess what I try to get across to people all the time is that uh, you would never walk up to a piano and say, what kind of music are you supposed to play on one of those? And that's how the hammered dulcimer ought to be also. You just do whatever you want to. It's a, an instrument.